Welcome into the Mike Gallagher Show. I'm glad you could join us. Marco Rubio's story is uh, is an extraordinary one. I've shared it with you many times. Uh, he was born um, in uh, Miami to Cuban-born parents who came to America after Castro's takeover. Um, he is a, a very popular Tea Party-supported guy. I happen to admire him very much. Uh, and he right now is uh, sort of, many say, in a little bit of the hot seat trying to convince conservatives that he hasn't been duped, at least that's the way NPR puts it, in terms of immigration reform. Let's welcome, on the Mike Gallagher Show guest line, Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, great having you back. How you been, sir? I'm well. Thanks for having me back. Always appreciate your your, your time. You know, I, 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 I'm going to be very candid with you, as I know you'd expect us all to be here in this conversation. I want to support what you're doing because I support you. I like you a lot, admire you. Uh, I think you 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 are a terrific leader, and you 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 have a great promise for a future for the Republican Party nationally. Uh, obviously, you're getting a great deal of pushback. Uh, a lot of conservatives are saying are, are trying to call your immigration reform um, amnesty for illegals. I was on a forum last night. I hosted an event with Newt Gingrich here in South Carolina, and Newt said, "Listen, anything that's 800 plus pages." is problematic. You know, I mean, why can't we have uh, immigration reform that's simple, that's easy, that is um, that, 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 that isn't that ha- doesn't have layers and layers and layers of exceptions and waivers and exemptions? Is, is he right? Well, I think he is partially right in essence that immigration is very complicated and, and very overlapping on the problems that we have. It's one of the reasons why the why the what we have in place today is so bad. But the, look, the way to start analyzing the situation is let's first talk about what we have today. Because if we don't do anything, we're stuck with what we have in place right now. Here's what we have in place right now. We have in place a 19th century immigration system, which is basically based on whether you know someone who lives here or not. If you know someone who lives in the United States, you get to come. If you don't know someone who lives in the United States, it doesn't matter what your talent or your skills are or whether there's a job waiting for you, you can't come. So that has to be fixed. The second thing is it's cumbersome, it's overregulated, it's complicated, you have to hire lawyers. And one of the things that contributes to illegal immigration is that legal immigration is so costly, so expensive, and so cumbersome to do. Mm-hmm. Third is we're not enforcing our immigration laws. We have no way to track people if they overstay their visas. We have no way for employers to reliably check on the immigration status of the people they're hiring, which is the big magnet. And quite frankly, while there's been some improvement in some parts of the border, other parts of the border remain unsecure, insecure. And, uh, and that's not good for the country from both the sovereignty perspective and the national security perspective. Those are all real problems. They all have to be solved. And then on top of all that, you have 11 million human beings living here in the United States. They're illegally here in violation of the immigration laws. You're not going to round up and deport 11 million people, so you have to figure out what to do with that in a way that isn't unfair to the people that have done it right and isn't rewarding what they've done. This is a very complicated issue, so they have to be solved, and they all have to be solved, not one of them, all of them. Right, and, and, that's, and that's where I, I, I mean, again, I'm inclined to try to give support to what you're doing because I'm willing to accept that this is a complicated issue. It isn't going to be solvable by bumper stickers, you know, and, and, and a, a lot of us talk show hosts who have the luxury of opining on the radio or on TV every day, we can say, you know, no to amnesty, or we can say, uh, you know, secure the borders, and, and we can talk in, in, in broad terms, but in terms of actually trying to solve the problem of illegal immigration, I, I guess it's fair to say, and I think this is your message, Senator Rubio, a complicated problem can't be solved with a three-paragraph document. Yeah, and to be honest with you, a lot of the pages that are in that document are just kind of renumbering existing law. For example, the e-verify part of the law requires a major rewrite of existing law because it's it's not easily it's not as easy as people think it is. Now, I remember there were remember the predictions were this bill would be 1,500 pages long. It's now half of that. Uh, but look, besides the point, this bill is a starting point, and that's what the other part I, I, I hope people understand is. And I, I understand how things have been done in the past in Washington, where they come up with this bill in a room, and then they basically tell everybody, okay, here's the solution, take it, leave it. That's never what I signed up for. On the contrary, the way I think you're supposed to make public policy in this country is you file a bill as a starting point, but you don't pretend that you have all the answers to every question, and then you get input from others. And what I have suggested to those who have problems with some component of the bill is, you know, maybe you have a very valid point. In fact, I've heard some valid 
objections. Let's try to fix it. Let's try to change it. But but to just say let's defeat the whole thing, right. I don't think that's a productive approach no. either. I think this is a starting point that obviously we can and should improve. You know, I, I would say now to you that the bill that's in place right now probably can't pass the House, so it will have to be adjusted because people are very suspicious mm-hmm. about the willingness of the government to enforce the laws now and in the right. future, given our experience with immigration in the past. That is a very legitimate suspicion. It's one that I share. And if there's anything we can do to make it even tighter, to improve, to ensure that the laws are enforced so we don't have this problem in the future, you know, that's exactly what we should be working on, developing. And I hope that we can. That's why, you know, there's going to be a committee here, committee markups, um, and there's been multiple days and weeks of amendments made to, to improve the product. And I look forward to that. I think that's important. But what I don't think we can pretend is that we can't do anything. I mean, to not be involved, um, to not do anything is would be to leave in place what we have now, which is really terrible for the country. Do, do you believe, do you have the same hunch that I have that there are a lot of people on the other side of the political aisle from where you and I are uh, who, who want open borders, who don't want any real border enforcement, they just don't want any immigration enforcement whatsoever, and they and they don't have the 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 integrity to admit that uh but 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 in the shadows sort of of their of their ideology that that's truly their starting point is is that fair yeah i mean there's no doubt there are people that feel that way and and uh and but they're not a serious player in this conversation i don't think i mean mm-hmm. now whether they hide their intentions or not that's mm-hmm. another issue mm-hmm. and then i think there are others that just think that the issue of enforcement is overblown but what they don't understand is this and that is the, great, the American people are the most compassionate people on earth. We've proven that over and over again. And the question now is we have 11 million people in the country that are here illegally. And we recognize we're not going to round up 11 million people and deport them. We are willing as a people to figure something out for them, but only if, number one, what we figure out is fair to the people that have done it the right way, and number two, if we make sure that this never happens again. And it's, it's that number two. That's complicated because there's, there's such a lack of trust. All these objections that you're hearing out there, many of which are well-grounded and well-founded, and these are good people that just don't want to see this happen again. And so they're, they are worried that this administration will not enforce the law, and they have a right to be worried right. about that. We have to figure out a way to, to find language in a bill that gives people confidence and assurances that the law is going to be enforced. That's the highest hurdle here. The right. highest hurdle here is not what to do with 11 million people. The highest hurdle here is how can we ensure that the government enforces the law, has E-Verified, secures the border, so that it never happens again. And what you have now are people that just don't believe anything the federal government says or does, and particularly this administration. And that's the big obstacle we're facing right now, and I think it's a very legitimate one. Senator uh, Marco Rubio joins us here on the Mike Gallagher Show. Let's talk about that cynicism and that suspicion that so many of us have about the government's inability to enforce the law as it applies to, to illegal immigration. Um, one of the big problem areas that you keep hearing, and, and I hear, is that this bill contains hundreds of waivers, exceptions, and exemptions. And indeed, last night at this Newt Gingrich forum uh, that I was at, Newt mentioned that somebody said to him on page 800 and something of the of the actual uh, bill that there is uh, an exemption given to the secretary to 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 waive any of the laws enforcing you know any of our Ill- illegal immigration laws at their discretion. Well, that, first of all, look, I mean, I think that's an exaggeration. The, the bill certainly has the, na- the word waiver on multiple times in the bill, and to, to describe each of them in detail would be impossible. It's only put out a, a product that it does that. Suffice it to say that I think that to say that is exaggerated. I will say there are waivers in the bill. There are waivers in existing law. Let me give you an example of one. There's a requirement in the bill that says that you have to work. When you, when you get this temporary status, because if you're illegally here and you qualify, you get this temporary status. Mm-hmm. When you go up, you, that's not forever. That, that has to be renewed over and over again. When you go back at the six-year mark to renew it, one of the things you have to prove is that you've been gainfully employed the last six years and that you're not a public charge and that you're not dependent on social benefits in order to survive. But what if you've been hit by a bus? What if a, a year ago you were in this horrible car accident and were left disabled and have been unable to work? So the secretary in the department has the ability in a circumstance like that, for example, to waive the work requirement because you've legitimately been disabled. Now, can that waiver be abused? No doubt. At least it's got a way to tighten it. But I would just say that's an example of one of the waivers. But this idea that somehow the secretary could just not enforce the law at all, I don't think that's certainly not the intention of the bill. Here's the other thing I would say to people that are pointing this out about the waivers. Then let's come up with an amendment to close it even tighter. If, in fact, that's your only objection with the bill or one of your main objections with the bill, then let's work together to address that. That could be fixed. If, in fact, somehow in the drafting, the unintended consequence 
is that the secretary has given too much discretion. Right. We can fix that. All that we can, and we're willing to fix. I'm certainly willing to fix that. Right. Uh, I don't think that should be a reason not to do immigration reform because I certainly think we have to do it. Otherwise, what we leave in place today is the ultimate waiver. What do we have in place right, right now? It's right. the ultimate waiver where the administration not only refuses to enforce the law, but the secretary has testified that the border is already secure, that we don't yeah. need anything more. I, I tend to think you're right. And i got to say in closing, Senator Rubio, because I know how busy you are and, and I appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. I hope you'll come back because one of the things I greatly respect is your ability to bring this message to the people. It's no secret that you've been making the rounds and you've made these kinds of appearances. Frankly, that is that is so much better than, than the, the, uh, the Nancy Pelosi, well, we'll have to pass the bill before you know what's in it approach. So thank you for taking the time to explain it to Mike Gallagher Show listeners and, and, and others around the country. And again, please come back as we continue to dive into this uh, and learn what's in it. I very much appreciate your time, Senator Rubio. Keep fighting the thank good fight. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for the opportunity. You bet. Senator Marco Rubio joining us here on the Mike Gallagher Show.